Meet Pitch DB, the ultimate platform for speakers looking to make their mark on podcasts, conferences, and media outlets. Pitch DB provides access to over 3 million platforms, ensuring you find the perfect avenue for your message. With AI integrations, your bios and pitches are tailored uniquely to each opportunity, giving you the edge you need. Join now at pitchdb.com. Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. This is Annika Jackson, and today I am here with somebody who is making a name for himself in visual arts and music, who also is a student at USC in the grad program that I teach in, which is not how we met, but Babs, I'm so happy to have you here on the show today. Thank you very much for having me, Sure, Absolutely. So please, I know that we have not the same experience, but my mother was an immigrant. She's Thai and Laotian and came here for college. I know that you started out, you know, in Nigeria, you've lived in England, and now then you moved to the United States. So I'd love for you to, to talk about that journey and how it's helped create who you are today. Yeah, being an immigrant is very much so something. So I moved from Nigeria to the UK when I was six. And I remember one of the first things that I found perplexing in the UK was there was always electricity 24 <laughs> seven. Um, I was just waiting. I was waiting for the lights to go off and it never did. When well, I realized it was like 24 seven, I was like, this is an amazing country. So uh, yeah, I moved to the UK when I was six. It took a while to adapt, but by the time I was 12, I got to the swimming of it. I moved to the US when I was 18. So that was definitely a, a huge culture shock. I didn't actually think it would be that big of a culture shock. That That's the thing. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't know because, you know, you, you think like the UK and the US are so similar, but it's very similar, but like little mannerisms are very different. How we talk, our humor is very different, very rude, very crass, <laughs> very bold. So when it came to move to America, it was almost like a bit of an ego death. Like I like who I thought I was had to almost like die and be rebuilt because I thought I was this person and the world around me was saw me as that person in the UK. And when I moved to the US, it's like people don't know how to interact with you and you have to learn how to be a new person. So that's how I got into creativity because I didn't really know who I was as a person. So I got into things like photography. I picked up a camera, learned how to shoot, learned Ooh. how to shoot video through that. And I also learned how to DJ just by um, experimenting, trying to be a different person. You know, I try to learn as much things as I can because, you know, I felt like a new person. Wow. I love that you give that nod to the culture shock between different countries and even two countries that speak English, speak slightly different English. Yeah. Slightly different mannerisms, as you said. Yes. But then even going into the United States, because you didn't start out in Los Angeles, correct? You went to university in, is it Michigan? Yeah, I went to Michigan State. Yeah, so (laughs) go green. (laughs) Yeah, so I very much didn't do enough research on that. So I almost like picked out of a hat. So yeah, so Michigan is, it's almost Southern in its, outlook what i thought michigan was before i moved isn't i had no idea what michigan would be like it's completely different to what i would even perceive yeah and th- i think that's probably what happens to a lot of people who come here for university yeah. is they pick oh, yeah. something because it looks good and you have a perception <laughs> from tv or whatever yeah but then yeah. it's a different reality because i see that with a lot of students who first start with university in the south or the midwest and yeah. then end up coming to la for to USC, for instance, for grad school, uh, which yeah. is a completely different culture. Exactly. But for some reason, Los Angeles was a smoother transition. Maybe it's because I've been in the US for that long, but for like the first six months, you know, I feel like my people are uncomfortable, you know, but after like a year, I was very much so like eased into it. I think it was finding the music community here that very much so helped me when you're walking towards something it makes the city a lot better. When I was like, oh, what do I want to do? What do I want to be? It's almost like you're not well walking with purpose. So now I have like an idea like where I'm going. It makes the city so much better. Yeah. 
And was it a dream to come to the United States for university or just to be here? Is that what propagated the move here in the first place? No, I wouldn't say it was a dream. It was more so I felt like I had a better life opportunity going moving here. It was almost like now or never, you know, it wasn't that great in the UK, you know. Just no pants. And it was really smart because I made this decision at 18. And in hindsight, it was a very smart decision. At 18, I made the decision to myself that, you know, there's nothing for me here. And that was before things like Brexit happened. That was before the UK economy's time. You know, that's good hindsight for an 18 year old. So well done to me. Yes. yes so it was just a better opportunity, better life. You know? Yeah. And what about your family? Where are they located? So my mom's still in the UK and my dad travels around. So he has a company, so that means he's just just ring around. So sometimes he's in Houston, sometimes he's in Nigeria. Oh, wow. Sometimes he's in Ghana. So we have no clue where he is, you know, (laughs) he's he's all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And I don't know if you know this about me, but I started out in marketing in music also, but I was not a DJ. I was promoting DJs and clubs. An that's event. so cool. No, so, I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. why one of the reasons I was really excited to have you on the show because, yeah. to your point, and I just I feel it right now. Like music is something that really brings people together. It doesn't matter what culture you come from or what you look like. If you can connect on music, then sure. it's such a beautiful thing, and it creates that common experience Come on. where then you have you're open right to. Yes hearing from somebody else, to learning about them, to becoming friends, colleagues, et cetera. Exactly, exactly. You don't really get that with, I feel like as a creative music, it's almost like one of the highest levels of creativity. As you said, it unites people. And one thing I realized through my journey in America, I've always had a young to bring people together. I've always loved, you know, bringing a group of people together and I'm finding that through bringing my event. Sometimes not everybody come with, you know, it's LA, it's hard to get people out, but <laughs> ideally I would want to have an event where I can bring 200, 300 people together and, you know, let them have a good time, forget their words. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, before we get into your event, I would love to hear more about what you're doing now. Um, have you finished your degree? Uh, did you start all of these things while you were in your grad program? What does life look like for you? Yeah, so in terms of DJing, I've been DJing for seven years now, but certainly this year, I've really been trying to like build my brand. I reala- I think one thing I realized is it's not a matter of skill. I was always waiting to get better, get better. <laughs> I realized, especially in LA, it's branding, branding, yeah, branding. It's absolutely. an interesting thing. No one cares if you're good, but they care if you can bring people. They care if you can build a community. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's where I'm at with DJing. I finished my degree um, in May. So I interned over the summer. I was um, working in the music industry. I was doing A and R. Yes, I was doing A and R work, and right now I'm doing like creative strategy work with artists, helping them with their brand and helping them with their image, helping them with photography, helping them with video. Right now, it's like I'm trying to figure out: Do I want to go in the advertising route? Do I want to be in the music industry? Because you know, with the music industry, you can be in it, but you don't have to make it your career. That's one thing I really, you know, so. Right. Yeah. yeah, I feel like the duality because when I was interning, it was like every second of the day is music, 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 and there wasn't mm. a balance. You know. Yeah, well, and to that point, I think the creativity in music and visual arts, being a photographer, videographer, also helps you. Like if you start there, because I've interviewed a lot of people on this show who started yeah. out as DJs and then moved into yeah. entrepreneurship and businesses sure. that are completely unrelated, but you built up exactly. so many skills through everything that you're learning through your creativity. Yeah, it's crazy how those skills almost intertwine. I know so many photographers that become DJs, so many DJs become photographers. I wonder what the common thread is of what makes them intertwine. Maybe it's that yearning to connect with others, but it's a very interesting parallel. Yeah. So tell us about your music. Do you speak to a specific genre of music? Do you play world music? Like, what's your vibe? Yeah, so I started off with um, house music. I was a massive house head in the UK. But when I started DJing, it was like co-ops and, you know, Greek life events. So I never really enjoyed DJing that much because I couldn't play what I loved. So it was just like, you know, uh, this like a tool. I felt like a, you know, iPod. It's when I moved to LA, I went to my first 
like advanced and the music was global sound it was called Pangea Sound and they were collaborating with another event called No Nuzda which is a South Asian music event mm. and just I've never heard like culture and the night out you know what I mean so it just it, like a light bulb like you know like lit up it was the first time I had Afro beats because I'm from Nigeria I've never heard Afro beats at a night out wow so yeah, yeah never heard like my like music at a night out and I heard it for the first time and I was like wow this is so amazing and then recently I am obsessed with a genre called I'm a piano it's an offspin of Afro beats yeah. and it is taking the world by storm it's Afro beats with a lock drum so the South African took elements of you know afro beats and they added their own spin to it and they added this distinct long drum and when you hear it you'll understand like oh this is why it's a thing that long drum adds so much difference so right now i'm a massive about my piano head and you know, i'm pushing it to the world it's a rapidly growing genre but it's very funny when i sort of like all the djs know about you know i'm a piano like most djs do but like when I talk to like my ordinary friends, like I'm a piano, what's that? I'm like, you don't know I'm a piano? Like, where have you been? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Fantastic. So what are you doing um, on the flipping to the visual side really fast before we get into your events? Can you tell us about visuals by Babs? What does that look like? And I know you said you're working with artists. Yes. Are you also yes, doing, so are right. you showing in a gallery or are you, you know, what else Hopefully. are you doing? So right now we're rebranding to focus, but boy, it is more so fashion photography. Oh. And now, because I'm in this music space, I want to work with artists, help them build their content, help them do their portraits, working with DJs. So it correlates. So it correlates. I feel like the fashion space, it was very... When I moved there, I was ideally focusing on fashion photography and I felt, you know, I wasn't moving in the right direction. Nothing was happening. And I think when it comes to like branding and when it comes to branding and image, do what works. If nothing is happening for you, it's okay to pivot when it comes to branding. And I think that's what I learned from the USC courses, the branding class. It's okay to pivot. Everybody has, who has a big brand has multiple layers to their brand. You don't have to be one dimensional. You can be this and that. So yeah, right now with my photography, I'm still shooting when I can. But right now, DJing is the focus and I'm trying to intertwine the photography and the video with the music element I'm in, yeah. So you're creating a whole immersive experience. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Making it correlate. Yeah, I love that. So that leads us pretty nicely, I think, to your new music event that you started. So can you tell us a little bit about what that is and what people can expect? Yeah, so I just started an event called Diaspora Dance. And after the pandemic happened, I feel like I've come to LA at the right time. There has been a new wave uh, music events and before when I first found out about them they were so they were really small like mm. a couple of people and they've all of them have boomed there's Afro Beats of the World Pangea Sound No Another uh, Link Up but all these small events are booming and building a community so when I found out about them I was so obsessed I would go all the time and I think one day I was like I can do it myself because I was always waiting like asking me like please let me dj please i'm like you know what? sometimes you've got to make initiative so diaspora dance is an event with all these events it's more so in one lane it's like okay it's afro beat this is a south asian event this is latin and i'm trying to combine them i'm trying to find a place that reminds people of home on the dance floor so that's what it's about it's about bringing people back to home because you know when you live in a different country, it's hard. It's hard to find community. It's hard to find people that's like you. So that's what I want to build with my event, a community where people feel like they're back at home, where people feel like they're safe and they can explore new music through the diaspora. So yeah, that's the point of the event. Fantastic. Is it a weekly event, a monthly event? Is that still being... Yes. So I've done four events so far. Um, mm -hmm. I started in around September. So it's going to be bi-weekly, so two weeks. You get two events in a month. So I might do one event that's like fully global sounds and like another event that's more geared towards um, house music. Fantastic. And 
I know that because I grew up in Kansas right. and then I lived in Chicago. I've lived in Los yeah. Angeles three times now, San Francisco and Houston. And yeah. so I know that it can be really hard to break into a new community, right? And to yeah. figure out, as you've mentioned, like moving from like one country and continent yeah. to another country and continent to another country and continent. Mm, yes, how, how difficult it can be to find yourself and find the right people. And I know particularly exactly. in LA, everybody's from somewhere else almost. Yeah, and course, so it can yeah. be easy to meet people, but they might not be the people that you mm. really connect with or that you feel are really your people. So I'd love to hear some of your advice for networking and making those connections for all the people who are starting out or had to move to a new city for whether it's for university or for a new job or looking to figure out how to foster those relationships. Just don't stay up. You really have to be (laughs) outside and seek. As I said before, if it doesn't work for you, when I was trying to break in into the talking community, I realized I'm more extroverted. Like... I was trying to make these relations and it just wasn't working. But with the DJs, it was like a smooth fit, even though I wasn't performing Uh at that time. So keep going out. When someone tells you, hey, do you want to do this? Just do it. Just try different things. Try different hobbies. I think once people like graduate and they start their careers, they're rescind to just playing it safe, not trying new things, you know. They're like, this is me, this is it, my career has everything. You know, not a lot of people have hobbies and something they're working on. It's only their career and then it's like, you need multiple things, you know, it's okay to pivot. You need to have layers, you know, life is about exploring, you know, especially when you're young, you know. Yeah, I've seen a lot of my friends graduate and they just, they don't explore new things. They don't try to find deep layers of themselves. This is work, I'm good. A bit. I'm, it's like I'm done trying. For me, I'm always constantly trying to evolve. I'm always constantly trying to seek new things and be a tad bit better every day. Whether I succeed, probably not, but it's at least I attempt, you know. Right. So, yeah, go outside. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'm hearing you say yes, right? Say yes to everything until you yes. figure out if it's what fits you or what doesn't fit yeah. you and just yeah. be open to the possibilities. But how did, exactly. how do you, when you got into the photography community, for instance, well, did you go on meetups to find people? Did you go through yes. organizations on campus? Did you, you know, Facebook, you're probably not on Facebook, but Facebook groups mm. or LinkedIn groups. How did you find those networks in the first place? Twitter, social media, uh, just actually be a fan. So I mean, be a fan, ask to assist the photographer. Being a value, being a value is, you know, I've noticed something about Americans they hate doing stuff for free but you have to do you have to do free work in this world you have to be of value if there's someone you really like and you believe in what they're doing it's okay to be a fan it's okay to be like let me help you you know since I do got to bite the bullet and you go and be like hey we need a big fan of your work how can I help you out you know be a value to someone you believe in it's okay to do that you know so yeah just um use the internet reach out to people and help them out mm. That's really good advice. I think it's really hard for people, though, to sometimes let go of the thought, right, of, well, what is that person going to think of me? What if they turn me down? Do you have any words of advice for somebody who's kind of stuck in their own? I used to be so bad at rejection, so I was scared of rejection. But at this point, you just have to dissociate. It's like when you're scared of rejection, it's like that's your ego taking control. Sometimes you've just got to think of yourself as a sim like you're just a a character in a video game going through the motion like hey i really want to work with you i don't exist when you attach it to your ego and you think that person's being malicious he's being rude to me he doesn't think i'm of value no that's not usually the case they usually (laughs) most people are usually busy so this is a skill i've learned recently like if it was like two three years ago if i got rejected i'd be down for like weeks on an end but i've just gotten better just ask empty you know, uh, empty mouths don't get bad. <laughs> yeah. So just persevere. And, exactly. And be persistent. Yeah. So you started Diaspora Dance. Yeah. You're really leaning into DJing and creating an immersive experience with the visual yeah. aspect as well. Videos, photography, music. Yeah. What else is next for you? Are you? Do you see yourself staying in Los Angeles? Yeah, hopefully. I'd love to stay in Los Angeles. But I think the goal is to be a global person, to do festivals, to produce my own music to create my own music and to create a community to create an audience that is 
here for me. One thing I realized is you can't grow an event just relying on your friends to come through. You've oh. got to actually build a community, build fans that love your work. And the best way to do that is to make your own music. So I want to do festivals. I want to travel the world, make my own music. And right now it's emerging as an actual artist. Right now, what I'm doing in terms of branding is becoming an artist, not just a DJ, because anybody can DJ, but not many people are artists. You so yeah, becoming an artist. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. If there is one other piece of advice that you would give to anyone listening, what would that be? One of the people advice is just keep on exploring, be yourself at all times, and just keep trying new things. Don't be afraid to fail. There's always something... I think, and I'm still, I'm not even following this advice, but there's, I feel like everybody knows in the back of their head, there's something that they're really good at. Or they've always been yearning to do that itch. You've got to really change that itch, you know, even if the thing that scares you, go do that. The thing that you're embarrassed to do, just go do that and, you know, give it your all at that. Yeah. Fantastic. And Babs, what is the best and easiest way for people to follow you on your journey, learn about your event, work with you? Yes. So pretty much Instagram at Babzaf, B-A-B-Z-A-F. I also have a website, which is visuals by Babs.com. And yeah, all my ads are Babzaf. So yeah, I'm pretty easy to find. Give me a message. Yeah, I'm pretty friendly and I'm always like down to help out, you know, at all times. So, yeah, Hi. I'm a friendly person. Fantastic. Well, this has been really fun and I'm looking forward to hearing more about your events and everything else that yeah. you have going on and following your burgeoning career. So Babs, yes. thank you for being here today. And thank you very much for having me. Of course. And thank you to my audience for coming to another episode of Your Brand Amplified. I'll be back again in a few days with another amazing guest sharing their story and their journey. Until then, want more? Check out AmplifyWithAnnika.com or follow me on socials at AmplifyWithAnnika.com.